Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. So just when you think things couldn't get crazier in this year of Satan, 2020, right? So oil was down 240% today. Okay, I'm just joking. First time in history, okay, uh, a contract, okay, and it, it, CNBC, it, it really is such a source of just, just misinformation. Um, a contract that's expiring tomorrow somehow got detached from a contract that was expiring later in the month, okay, and it showed that the WTI contract that's expiring tomorrow went negative, down like negative $30 a barrel, and everybody went nuts. Oil is negative borrow. So you're going to go to the gas station. They're going to pay you basically $80 to fill up your truck. Crazy stuff. The, the more this year materializes and the more things come out to light, it's like if I went outside right now and I literally saw a bunch of, you know, a bunch of unicorns, you know, break dancing and having, and having like a break, break dance off, I, I wouldn't be shocked anymore. Okay. If I saw my mother-in-law levitate, Okay, and the devil's claws will come out of her back. Wouldn't shock me anymore. So why is it shocking anymore that we've seen crazy stuff like this? And 2020 has showed you a couple of things. That number one, the market's out of its mind. It will always be out of its mind. Don't think for a second it'll ever be normal. Okay, so once you accept that, and I've accepted that a long, long time ago. Okay, especially the last few weeks when I just said, what's the difference what the market does? Doesn't make sense anyway. Once you kind of figure that part out, I think you'll be good. The good news is the market is trading really, really well. Okay, beta every single day is giving phenomenal opportunity. I think today's morning was very, very aggressive and then the market kind of did nothing for the rest of the day. So the, the, the story guideline for today was not that the Dow was down 500 points. So who cares? I mean, once you see a 3000 point move, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average about a month ago. Was this 500 points really scare anybody? So it wasn't the 2.5% move that the Dow was down or, uh, or anything else, or even the crazy oil contract that went minus $30 a barrel, okay? That's not the, the craziest part. The craziest part and the most important part, excuse me, the most important part of what we're seeing here, the day-to-day -day activities, especially uh, in the intraday ranks, are very, very solid. There's something there for everybody, the longs, the shorts, uh, everybody in between. What, what I like what we're seeing and continue to see is that both markets, okay, the bulls and the bears, have a really good stake, right? They can really make good claims that the action is much more superior beneath the surface that you are seeing. So today, if you turn around and say, well, the Dow is down 500 points, 2.5%, you probably say to yourself, well, something's wrong there. And when you look at what the market actually did compared to what beta continues to do, it's mind-boggling. Okay, absolutely mind boggling how strong the action is or continues to be uh, in the beta world. And you wake up this morning and you say to yourself, ah, oh, the Dow's down 300. And you turn around and you see everything is green, right? Apparently, Netflix, right? If apparently, for example, Netflix that reports tomorrow, Amazon, uh, Roku, right? They're like a bearish ETF now, okay? So now, you know how ZM continued to go higher as the market was crapping down the pure play on people trading from home or excuse me, working from home. And now all of a sudden these stocks have become like bearish, like the opposite of a bearish ETF or a bearish ETF. It's like now the market gabs down. Well, hell, you got to flight the quality. You got to flight the safety. You got to buy Netflix, right? People are staying home. Crazy, just absolutely crazy. Whoever came out with the 2020 virus, literally the whole year, the 2020 virus, send it back. Send it back. It's like that. It's like the Chinese order. No pun and no disrespect to anybody. It's like you know how you place an order in the Chinese food. They always forget something. Something forgot. You know they they something forgot us. Some logic. Some common sense. Something was left out of our delivery because 2020. I promise you is is never is not a year that I can remember in a long time. Even go back to the 2007 2008 financial destruction. At least you understand it, right? Everything's going lower. 
the world's going, coming to an end. Financial crisis. Everything's going to zero. Here, everything's going to zero. People are dying, but yet the market continues to go higher until today. So this is kind of where we are separating fantasy land from kind of what we see in front of us. So let's talk technically. Okay. So the Qs did a great job. Phenomenal rally by the Bulls a couple of days ago. And we reclaimed that 12, 212.75, 213 level. You guys remember that? So I've been talking about this level of two, three days. Friday, they did very, very well. Today, they came right back in to test the bottom of that range. See that? This rising five-day moving average, which again, on the surface, doesn't mean it's a big deal until it becomes a big deal. And now we're looking at uh, a day for tomorrow that the bulls have to do their job to protect that channel. Because if they don't, and the bears seize control and take control of the five-day moving average, well, we're going to start coming right back into this channel and start going all the way back down to this 205 level. Again, it doesn't seem like a big deal right now. No, nobody's really paying too much attention. But again, if you believe that the five-day moving average is the shortest term, most important area for sentiment, which I believe, right, then you have to believe that tomorrow's session is going to be incredibly important. Again, most people will not even think uh, anything of it from today. People will start turning around and say, well, the market just consolidated after a big run. And it did that. Absolutely right. And there was incredible strength this morning. But again, it's not what the market did. It's what the market is going to do next. Again, to live in past glory, it's like me sitting there and saying to myself, wow, I remember the internet craze. It was so great. Again, that's 20 years ago. Okay. So what the market did yesterday, what the market did the day before, what the market did three weeks ago, it doesn't really translate to what's going to happen next. And it's incredibly important, guys, this 212 area for tomorrow, that's the previous day's low. Everybody see that? Right, guys? The previous low on the Qs are 212. Any build below 212 for tomorrow, we're going to start going lower. Okay. So it's very, very important. So if we open up and we start violating that 212 area and the bears start building, Again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, then we're going to go down to 209, 212, and then ultimately to this rising 10-day support of 205. If you look at the SPX, same thing, right? The bulls did a phenomenal job last Friday, okay, get right above the 50-day moving average. And today we took we we failed to reclaim uh, the highs from Friday. Not only that, we put in a lower high, right? Lower high, lower low, and we closed exactly the same way we did on the NASDAQ 100 Qs, uh, right on the five-day moving average. So for, for, for the SPX, if they start losing, right? They start losing this 2820, okay? Keep these numbers in mind. They start confirming the 2820, we're gonna go down to 2811, and ultimately things get very, very aggressive. And again, remember guys, we're one headline away from getting very, very aggressive. It's great what the market did. It's great what the market's doing, but again, that's in the past. Let's pay attention for what it potentially could do for tomorrow. And if we any close below uh, 2811 on the SPX, we're gonna go down all the way down, well, not all the way, but uh, all the way down to this 2775 uh, area. Again, nobody's calling for a destruction of prices. We're just talking technical analysis. I don't wanna scare anybody. I understand people are very, very fragile. A lot of people have very, very thin skin. No way, Dan, that was a generational bottom. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Again, remember, I'm an idiot. I don't know. All I trust is technical analysis. Our opinions don't matter. So it's very, very important that we go into tomorrow's session. Uh, eyes wide open, right? Rose colored glasses off and really take a look and pay attention how the stocks react in the morning. If we gap up, see, start look, paying attention to this, starts putting in lower highs on the 60 minute channel. Or if we gap down, we wanna see how aggressive the bulls come back. The cavalry comes back to start reclaiming back uh, upward levels. So tomorrow, again, not, not a lot of people are gonna pay attention to the macro point for tomorrow. I do, I think tomorrow is an incredibly important area. I think the morning you could run into quote unquote, the chop factor, buyers on dips, because again, the market's been so strong, or sellers recognizing the importance of the five day and trying to build a new base uh, below it. So again, tomorrow you could see very, very choppy action in the first couple of candles, but again, it should start seeing much more clarity uh, closer towards lunchtime and may, maybe spills over into the following uh, day session. Uh, IBM, again, first tech stock, uh, first tech stock, uh, to report earnings. Again, IBM never beats, for God's sake. We talked about the on, the on the weekend video. They just never beat. Again, it's important to see how the street reacts. Are they going to give IBM a mulligan tomorrow? Netflix uh, 
Netflix tomorrow uh, comes out with earnings. The notable bet I saw on on Netflix, I believe there was a million dollar bet for the 500s. I believe so. I could be wrong. Actually, you know what? Let me give you exactly the number. Uh, I think I put it on my notes here. Let me take a look here. Um, let me see what the bet, the bet was, the notable bet into Netflix. Um, there was a buyer. He bought 107 contracts of the weekly 500 calls. So again, we don't know how Netflix is going to react into, uh, into earnings. Again, you can make a case the stock just ran up 200 points, um, right? 200 points. Can it go higher? Can it go lower? Is it going to baked in? We have no idea. But again, as IBM said, IBM never uh, beats their number. It's just amazing. Um, so we'll see exactly how, again, it plays out tomorrow with tech. If it translates into buyers, if they give IBM a mulligan, start making this market go back higher above uh, the five day. So you, you had a really, really good session here this morning. Okay. Very, very aggressive uh, action uh, this morning. And then next thing you know, uh, and then next thing you know, you had bupkis, literally nothing for the rest of the day. So let's talk about it. Uh, this is the first trade of the day. And again, it wasn't this, it wasn't the easiest trade in the world to mentally digest because again, shop had this 250 point rally. This was my first trade of the day. Uh, shop had this first 250 point rally in, in the last two weeks or so. And I said, look, the 52 week high is 594. Uh, keep in mind, it's up 250 points. So any stall out by the 52 week highs, okay, you know, don't even hesitate. Sell the stock and then, you know, be on your way. So I actually got long this thing red to green, okay. It started pushing up. Uh, it started pushing up to like 597, 598. So I was up at one point around seven and a half, eight dollars So I sold half up like five, five and a half. Uh, and then the stock went red. So I was like, look, you know, I already had in my head 250 point run. They could pull the plug, yada, yada, yada. I did the right thing. I did the right thing. Uh, I took profits on it. And then I looked up, the stock was up $36. <sighs> Again, safe than sorry. Again, if you told me a 250 point rally, it stalls out, goes red. You got to make sales. Again, if you did catch the whole move, congratulations. Uh, Roku, just a beast. Uh, 129.60 needs to build. Uh, here was Roku, right? Here's the 129.60 on Roku right here. These two channels, 129.60 on Roku, absolutely exploded, uh, went to 35. Roku is just a monster. Uh, Netflix again, uh, excuse me, before Netflix, uh, 731 builds below on Tesla. If it builds below, it can flush experienced traders only. Tesla got slammed, okay? Tesla really, really got hit here. So here was uh, the 731 right here. You see this whole channel here, right? 731, 731, 731. It got crushed. 731 right to the next supplies uh, support zone uh, at 712. And then it just spiked up. And I was waiting for that second move. Still waiting. Uh, never got back up there. Uh, Netflix, again, a beast. Uh, 438.50, 439 needs to build. Again, tomorrow uh, it kicks off earnings for beta. Here is a 738, right? Excuse me, 438. 439, you know, went to like 444, big move on Netflix. Just a monster, just absolutely a monster. Uh, sell on the way up, Roku, sell on the way up, shop, da da da, sell on the way up, right? Get the theme. Uh, so tech is strong, tech is strong. Tesla take on the way down, Netflix new highs. Uh, Boeing, right? Boeing never got up to the 52. Here's Billy, I actually traded Billy. Right, crazy as it seems, you know, traded Billy. Okay, well, there wasn't a lot of stuff going on uh, after the initial push, and uh, Billy spiked up. It, it did exactly what it had to do. Uh, Twenty nine eighty thirty needs to build. I knew it was going to stop at thirty thirty just because, uh, just because there was a supply zone there, and it hit perfectly. It hit perfectly right at thirty thirty and came right down. So nice little scalp. It's not usually something I do trade, but again today, you know, just wasn't a lot of options after uh, that first move in beta. Uh, so again, take on the way up. Uber, I still like it over that $29 level. Uh, Tesla, never built. Then I was going lower, never built. So I was waiting for Tesla in the afternoon and never built. So you had really, really good action right from the word go, okay? And then the market kind of just like did absolutely nothing, which is a good thing, okay? Which is an absolutely good thing. You don't need the market to lose its mind every single day. But again, based on today's close, I am starting to see a lot of names 
that could possibly confirm. Obviously, Q's for tomorrow. I am watching below the five-day. Uh, Boeing, again, look how Boeing closed, guys, right on support, right? Right on support. If this support uh, confirms, it's going to go lower. Look at Apple. Same thing, right? Apple is, is teetering, man. Apple is just one day away from getting hit to the 10-day moving average. So uh, you're getting a lot of really names that are potentially – uh, setting up for tomorrow's action. So tomorrow, again, I don't think a lot of people are going to put a lot of stock of importance how tomorrow trading day could play out. But again, if you believe that the five-day moving average is an incredibly important part to short-term sentiment, then tomorrow's day is going to be a very important day for the bulls. Guys, God bless everybody. Hope everybody is safe. And with God's help, we'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.